Now that you've finished your first project where you made your triangle character, now it's time to work on your second introductory project, which is to create a logo. Really not just creating a logo, but copying a logo. So the first thing you need to do is think of a logo that you'd like to copy. It can be complex or it can be simple depending on how confident you feel about your Inkscape skills. Now for this assignment, you need to make a logo plus add some kind of text. Okay, so just be sure that if you pick one that you can include that you will be able to include those things with it. So let's see what we've got here. Well, Target is always a nice easy one. Um, could do Target, could try Pepsi. Levi's, that looks pretty cool. I wonder if we can do that Levi's logo. I think I might get that one. And let me take a little screenshot of that Levi logo and then we can upload it into Inkscape when you take a look at it. All right, so now I'm gonna go into my Inkscape and let's just get rid of this. Let's create a new one. Remember we can zoom in quickly like this. Now I'm gonna import my picture so that I can look at it while I work. So I'm gonna to go to File, Import, and it should bring up some files for me to pick from. And I'm gonna to go to my desktop because I took a screenshot. I've got a lot of screenshots on here, so let's see if we can find it by the date. There it is. All right, so there's my Levi's logo. Now, I could really be a cheater and copy right over the top of it if I wanted to. Um, so let's let's do that. Let's let it, let's put it in right here. And I'm going to show you some techniques to make the shapes uh, to make this logo. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I have two layers because I'm going to be drawing on one layer over the top of this one, and I want to remove this after I'm done. So. Um, if I go over here, shift Control l is going to give me layers. And so here you can see that I've got layer one. I'm going to double click that and I'm going to call that Levi logo. That way I'll know what it is. Then I'm going to hit this plus sign and I'm going to make a new layer. Oops, it didn't. I'm going to call this one my logo. And I don't know why that didn't save my name, but. All right. So now I've got two different layers. I want to work on the My Logo layer so that I can remove my other one. And I'll show you that in a minute. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create this red shape that makes this, I guess it's like a pocket design or something. That would be pretty hard to draw just like it is. Well, maybe not. Let's, let's use our, I'm going to show you two different methods of doing this. One is just to take this Bezier curve tool. Remember, click, let up whenever you want a straight line. Click at that corner, let up, click. And then I'm going to come in here and click in the center of this curve. And I'm going to show you how to change that curve. Click at the tip, click at the center, click at the tip, and then come back up here and close the shape. All right, now we can see that that doesn't quite match what the shape is because we need to fix these curves. We are going to modify this by node. So if you go up to where there's this little pointer here with the edit paths by nodes, you'll see that it gives you these diamonds. Let me zoom in a little on that. See how it gives you these diamond shapes? Each of these are a node that I can change. Now the straight sides, it's worked great, but I want to curve this middle one. So I'm going to click on that um, diamond there on the curve. And then I'm going to go to these tools across the top here. I'm going to go to the one that is the curved line here. And if I hover over it, it says make selected node smooth. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see that I get these handles and it's also started to become curved. 
I could pull those handles and tilt those handles until it just matches my curve. And then I'm going to do the same for this other one. That one's not exactly in the center. I think I'm going to move it over a little. And let's see if I can't curve this side. But um, just a scotch. Okay. Now let's make the outline heavier so we can kind of see it. Let's go to fill and stroke. Stroke style, and we're going to make it a little bit thicker so we can kind of see what we've got here. That looks pretty good. It covers it nice. Now, if I go to my layers, remember I'm working. Oh, I was supposed to be working on my, my logo layer, but it looks like maybe I didn't. I can tell which one I worked on if I do this. See, it is there. If I click that little eye, it makes it go away. If I click the eye on this Levi logo, it makes it go away, see? Now, we're going to get rid of that outline after we finish, but I want to make sure that I can see it, so I want it to show up. Now, these letters could be a challenge because I'm probably not going to have the font that matches. So I'm going to have to create curves for each of these letters. All right. But before I do that, I want to show you another way that you could create this Levi shape. So I'm going to create a new layer that says it's uh, my logo number two because I'm going to show a new way to do this. So I'm at my logo number two, and I'm going to make my logo disappear. And I'm going to redraw this. I'm going to start out with a rectangle. And I'm going to draw a rectangle that is roughly the size of that design. Now I'm going to uh, take this rectangle and you know what, let's, let's get rid of the fill on that rectangle because that is hard to see. We'll give it its outline, but we'll get rid of its fill. Now, I'm going to use this same Edit Paths by Nodes tool because my rectangle has nodes, but I also have to tell it to convert it to a path. So I click on this thing that looks like a figure eight. Now it's going to give me a node at each corner. I can now take each of those nodes and pull them in on the sides, just where I want them. And if I double click, I can create another node. So I want one right here, double click, that. Now find my center, double click. Find my center of my curve, double click, much like we did before. And like we did before, I'm going to change and convert that. I'm going to select that node. I'm going to go to smooth. And now I'm going to pull that up to meet that curve. Now, the curve is too sharp, so I can pull the handle out to make the curve. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Change that up. Pull my handle out and pull it out on this side. And we're going to get a nice curved shape. So there's two, oops, it's not exactly right, but I think you kind of get the idea here. Um, that there's just more than one way to create these shapes. And this method of taking a shape and altering it is really very helpful. Now, we want to get our letters in here. So let's make a new layer for our letters. We're going to make this one letters. All right, and now I'm going to start copying these letters. I can do it the same way that I made my shape. I use my Bezier curve tool. Just click, let up, click, let up, click, click, click and click. 
All right, there's my L. That one's pretty easy. Let's go here and do the V because that one's going to be an easy one too. So click at my corners, click, 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 and click. All right. Oh, let's do that I too because that's a good one. Click, 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 and click. All right, now we're going to do these other ones. Let's do the E. So then we'll start with the click and click because those are straight. Now you can click and drag, click and drag to make curves if you'd like. And with practice, you'll get to where you can get pretty close without having to come in and change. Oops, that wasn't what I wanted. Let's try that again. All right, so click and click and click. And now hold down that mouse button and drag and drag. You want as few of these Everywhere you click, it's going to give you a node, and you want as few of them as possible. We can delete some after we draw it. If it's not perfect, it's no big deal. Now, when I get here, I'm going to click and click because I want that to be straight. Then I'm going to click again and drag. Click and drag. Click and drag. And then close it. Now, if I zoom in on it, you'll see that it's really not very straight. Oops, let's not go quite that big. Um, I want you to be able to see it here. So I'm going to edit that, edit pads, and see it shows all my different nodes. And if I click on those, it's going to show me those handles. Well, I can go in and I can adjust those, move them around, even it up. Turn my little handle a bit. Try to make it a little more tidy. A little more like what it looks like. I think I might even just get rid of that one. See how when you get rid of a node, it kind of smooths things out a little bit sometimes? You can, you can change the shape with your handles instead. It's always better to have fewer than more, like that one. That's a mess. I'm going to get rid of that one. And kind of turn that. This one probably can go too. Just tuck that up there. I think that looks a lot better. Now let's do the now let's do the inside. Click and click. Click. Now I'm gonna drag. All right, a little bumpy again, so let's go back in. I may be able to do that with just um, a few of these. Let me get rid of those. I wonder if I can just do it with one. 